All right, so uh, today I'm going to show how to install ChromaDB. Chroma is a vector store database which is needed for training AI models. Like, let's say if you have documents like text documents or PDF documents and you want to teach it to your LLM or a large language model like OpenAI, ChatGPT 3.5 or 4, whatever. So you're going to have to store uh, those text documents in a vector DB so that your AI can read it and respond, right? So that being said, would be the uh, documentation page. You can get everything about it. And this is their GitHub page. And here I actually created a step-by-step -step documentation in my GitHub, which I will, the link I will make it available for you. In case I forget, please remind me. And that being said, I actually have it everything uh, on a digital ocean droplet. This is my digital ocean droplet where I actually connect via SSH. So this is a droplet where uh, it actually came uh, Docker installed. So let's first see what Docker I have here. That should be. All right. So I have uh, this version installed already, and this is an e Ubuntu. Is an Ubuntu Linux droplet, and also what you need is the Git. Let's see what I have here. All right, so Git version 2.3.4.1, and how to install Git? If you want to know, you can always go to my YouTube channel and uh, check up check out this video, the hosting Next.js. In here, I explain in detail how to install Node, uh, NVM, Git, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can find all this information right there. Then what you're going to need is this. Only thing I was missing is the uh, Docker Compose. So to compose Docker, uh, this is the curl command you need. And uh, in here, you're going to put in the latest version or whatever version you choose. And in my case, I had 2.24 dash per day uh, version. And I also have this link available. You can just hit this to copy and to move forward with it. And once you have uh, this installed, you're going to have to run this command, sudo chmod plus x, which will give this Docker Compose uh, executable file the executable permission on your Ubuntu droplet. And once that is done, you can just run this command like this. And you're going to see that it is installed. And there's a one optional, but I wouldn't say very optional because once you're going through installation in that session, this is going to be, this command is going to be available. But once you start up a new session, uh, it will go away un unless you do this. You create a symbolic link to the original Docker Compose file and put it inside your US or local bin because this path is always available on a Ubuntu Linux or most of the Linux uh, installations. So that way, no matter how many windows you keep opening, this command will always be available. So since I've already run this, and once this is installed and you saw something like this, right? Now you're ready to install Chroma. Now, you know, actually, this document actually helped me most to get this guy installed, not really Chroma's own documentation. This is a Langchain Chroma documentation. This is the one uh, you're going to need to implement Chroma and uh, create chatbots and stuff, right? So this is where I actually went. You know, to install it locally, I had to install, you know, Python, whatever, which I don't want to. Since I already had a Docker-based DigitalOcean droplet available, so I just uh, you know followed this. But uh, re remember, this command is not going to work. This didn't work for me, so I just went to went straight to the uh, Chroma GitHub repo, and then I just uh, copied this up and came back here, and this is what I ran. Straightforward git clone the the repo address via HTTPS and then CD to Chroma and then straight up run this command docker compose up dash d dash dash build. 
and this is going to build the whole uh, chroma re repo which you can actually find right here you can see all the details and all these uh, files are here in fact uh, if, if i show you here you can actually go let's say ls and go to chroma okay and do an lsltr and all these files are uh, available to for you to see and uh, if you need to change some port or something you can actually edit this file docker compose yml this is the configuration file so once uh, you see all that and have your necessary port you know change or whatever uh, if you don't want to change the port that's also fine then you're going to go ahead and type in docker ps just like that is going to show in in my case it was chroma server one and it started on a port 8000 on my ip address of this specific droplet and this actually verifies that you actually have your uh, chroma server up and running on the 8000 port following this document docker ps and chroma server one is run running as you saw there and once this is done the next step is to verify if the chroma is installed and for that you're going to have to write a little bit of code that's coming up all right so now that we have installed chroma db so it's time for us to test it so this is a development environment i created for myself where i use uh, node.js uh, and typescript and also uh, if we look here you'll see that i'm using a nodemon so that uh, once I start this uh, with, with npm run dev is going to be watching my changes and updating it accordingly. So let's go check the index.ts. So this is where I am actually bringing in this uh, Chroma DB test module, and the module is inside module and Chroma DB test right here. So what I need is mainly to test this is chroma client from chroma db and uh, it actually in, i also installed it here uh, chroma db as a development dependency chroma db right there so if i go here uh, and go to the module so once i have my uh, chroma client from chroma db i'm gonna go ahead in the constructor i open this uh, the whole class I'm calling it uh, chroma db underscore test. And here I am uh, bringing in basically two variables, uh, calling them private chroma client, uh, which is the chroma client type, because since I am using uh, TypeScript, I'm going to need type. And uh, I'm just using this as a type. And then a chroma URL, which is a string. So in the constructor, I am using that chroma url and this is my uh, url where my chroma db is up and running and i am feeding uh, this inside this as a path uh, for the chroma client uh, and this is how i'm using this chroma client and once this chroma client is established i am going to this method get chroma collections in this method, I am calling this chroma client list chroma uh, collection, uh, and uh, I am console logging it with this text uh, current chroma, uh, chroma collections. And the other one is create chroma collection. I'm also sending a string here. And uh, once I get the string, I am you know using the same uh, chroma client, which is right here this dot chroma client and create collection and inside that i am actually sending that name that coming from uh, the index where i'm actually calling making the call from right and then there is this delete one i'm also getting a same you know string which is the collection name and in here i am using the same uh, chroma client dot delete collection and throwing in that collection name that I'm getting from the index file where I'm gonna be running it from index.ts. And once this is done, once uh, you know it is actually deleted, then I am actually console logging it that console log 
or sorry, collection such and such name has been deleted successfully. So we have uh, delete, we have create, and we have get collections, right? Three different methods. So now let's come back here and let's first try to see what we have. I'm just uh, using that uh, Chroma DB test. This is uh, my module, and uh, in here I'm just instantiating that class Chroma DB test. And now, once this is instantiated, Chroma DB test module, and here I am just calling that uh, that method get Chroma collections, which is this guy right here, get Chroma collections, which is just using nothing but uh, list collections. And it's going to show me this console log once I uh, hit um, save. In fact, I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to go and run npm run dev right here. And there you go. It actually found the DigitalOcean Chroma collection. And it actually found uh, there are two other collections already in there, right? because I created them before, and that proves that our uh, DB is up and running fine. And uh, in here, we're going to go ahead and stop this guy for now. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new one, which is number two. And as you can see here, we already have a from Moose Collection 1 and then Moose Text Collection 1. So we are about to do a number 2 here. So let's save that. All right, look, it, once it created, it actually showing me that it created collection number 2. And now that it created it, let's also verify one more time like this like what we have, let's list them up. And it actually is showing me Moose Collection 2, Moose Collection 1, and the one that was there before. And now uh, we're gonna go ahead and disable this one and delete number two. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it because this time I'm gonna go ahead and delete and it's saying, that the Moose Collection 2 has been deleted successfully. And to have further proof, let's disable that and ask for that uh, you know, collection list once again. Save that, come here, and let's watch what happens. There you go, collection one and the other collection that was there, but number two has been gone. And this is it. In the next few videos, I'm going to go ahead and use a lang chain heavily and show you how to create the vectors uh, from your uh, text files and then query them using this database, ChromaDB. Stay tuned. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.